I need you. I need you to need me as much as I need you because God needs us. We might think, why does God need us? He has had all that he ever needed in the triunity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, an example of perfect unity in diversity as I and others have shared. In this eternal unity, it can never be said that he ever was lonely, needing to create to satisfy his loneliness, because if he ever did, he would then be as dependent upon his creation as his creation would be upon him. See this now in light of our being called sons of God to what Jesus Christ our Lord accomplished. Only in our seeing what follows would this dilemma of God being as dependent upon his creation as his creation is upon him be solved. Hear this mystery of godliness, hidden since time began, and the fall of humanity from sonship to becoming fallen sons of mankind occurred. There is a mystery eternally held in the mind of God the Father, expressed in the fullness of time through the Son of God coming in the mood of the Son of Man, empowered by God's Holy Spirit to fill God's eternal joy. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Hear this statement. Do not allow the voices, thoughts, and feelings in your carnal fallen mind, secular or religious, block you from seeing what is about to be shared to you. God eternally desired to have sons likened unto his first and eternally begotten son. Thus he eternally had those sons. Thus there never was a time that he did not have these sons. God the Father eternally desired to manifest himself to his son, thus had eternally prepared an indestructible body to which he, the Father, would eternally express himself through this embodiment of his eternal son and an image to which we as his eternal sons always would express his eternal image and purposes. What we have experienced in created time always was and eternally is this eternally manifested sons of God. The changing degree of glory helps us to understand what happened and how God our Father eternally corrected this to where it would appear to have never occurred, nor would it ever be brought to mind again. This experience that we are going through in human history of past, present, future, one day will be condensed to what is called a day of salvation. All of this is locked up in our eternal human spirit, waiting for the Holy Spirit to work this out of us with the free will of our carnal soul surrendering what it had acquired via the flesh, its particular race, culture, sect and religious creeds, and opinions of gender, male or female. At the surrender of this fallen soul, our fallen minds are renewed after the mind of Christ and our awakened mind of our spirit, giving us contact with our true Father of our spirits. All this has developed to greater depth in my other series of videos on the mind of Christ and the first begotten. Here I want to show how important this really is, revealing how we were eternally in the beloved. And because of this, this idea of our needing one another and God's need for us is needed to fully express who he is, and we are. In my series, The New Creation and the Kingdom of the Continuance brings out how God had eternally desired to express himself 
and his sons in a created mature world, which, if Adam had not fallen, would have been a world without end, manifesting the kingdom of God on earth, called in scriptures the kingdom of heaven on earth. I also express how what occurred at the fall of humanity to the mind of God was only a brief flash in the pan, so small that it would be, be considered to be a non-event. In other words, as we might express it, a matter not worth the time of day to God. As far as God's concerned, he's going on. And what Isaiah 64 clearly expresses, those of the continuance in a kingdom of the continuance that has no beginning or end, was, is, and ever shall be a world without end. So with this under your belt, so to speak, it is my hope that you have come to understand how we all need one another as God needs us to express this eternal reality which one day will be expressed in what's called the new creation and not this fallen creation which the final book of Revelation points to the new heavens and the new earth which is to our fallen carnal mind new to us but not to our awakened human spirit. So in closing, hear Paul the Apostle's prayer. May God give to you, he did, a spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of your heart, the subconscious area of your mind, might be enlightened, open that you might know the hope of your coin to things unseen, letting the things seen go.